apparently picked the busiest quick trip in all of Kansas City to go to today, but I need a Red Bull before we start this video, so I'm gonna go grab that. Energy drink acquired, and we'll jump into today's video. So this is gonna be a little bit more vlog-like. Uh, what I need to do right now, I got some new soap and stuff last week that I wanna try out. I need to wash the car, it's been pretty filthy. I'm not gonna do that today. But I'm going to grab some stuff that I need for a future video. Basically, my car hasn't been paint protected since I got it. Um, it wasn't in great condition from sitting outside of dealerships. But uh, I want to get a little bit of protection on it. I'm going to do a wash soon and then I'm going to clay the car. After I clay the car, I'm going to coat it uh, just with a spray on sealant. I'm going to use some of the bead maker. Uh, heard great things about it just to try to not make things worse and then when we get to Colorado and I have a garage and I have the time and the space where I can safely um, go through and polish the car and everything like that we'll do that in future videos but uh, unfortunately I don't have the ability to do that here right now so that's gonna, that stuff's gonna have to wait for a little while but I figure I can get this intermediate protection and we'll be good for a little while. So I'm going to start driving that way, go to the shop that I need to go to to get the clay bar that I need, and then we'll go from there. All right, this is awesome. Check out the license plate on this Mini. Cocoa Puff. That's so good. That's so good. Okay, so I got the auto scrub that I needed, and so I'm good on running most of my errands for today, but there is a main point to this video, which is now that I'm coming up on six months of ownership with the Quadrifolio, I wanna to touch on what it's been like to own and what the cost of ownership has been. So let's grab the car, uh, let's head somewhere else, and I'll talk a little bit about that. Okay, so I was gonna to try to film this in a park, but one, it's windy, and two, more importantly, when I went to the park, there were like five cars there, and every car had someone sleeping in it. So. I don't know if this is just people taking naps on their lunch break, but felt kind of weird to pull out a camera, start filming a video in a park where everyone's taking a nap, so... Anyway, we're back in a parking lot again. So, I've had this car for going on six months now. Yeah, almost six months now. So, I bought it on April 20th, is when I made the offer. I bought the car for $69,000. That's not a joke. That actually happened. <laughs> so. I'm a little proud of that. Um, had this car for almost six months now. I've got just over 3,400 miles on it, which isn't a lot, but I work from home, so I don't really have the need to drive a lot. Um, and I wanted to just talk about what my ownership experience has been like so far. Specifically, the cost of owning a 19 Giulia Quadrifoglio for about six months or so. These cars obviously have a reputation for being unreliable for whatever reason that is. I don't know if that's because the cars that were sold in Europe while they were no longer in the United States were actually unreliable. If the cars when they used to be sold in the United States were unreliable. But it seems like, at least for the Quadrifolio, from my experience and from what I've gathered on the forums, is a pretty reliable car. I've seen more issues with the two liters um, than I have with the Quadrifolio specifically. That's not to say that the Quadrifolios are always, you know, totally safe. I'm in the back of a parking lot and I thought that lady was going to come park next to me, which there is no one else back here. I'm in the complete back. I'm so far away from the store that this is a parking lot for. And that's just always how it works. You park far away and someone's always got to park next to you. Where was I? So by and large, these cars are generally fine and I want to talk a little bit about how much it's cost to maintain it on this one. And spoilers, this is not gonna be terribly interesting because for me, this car has been pretty reliable. So if I look back at my service records, which I've got pulled up off screen over here, um, let's see. Took the car into the dealership the first week of owning it, not because of any fault with the car whatsoever, but because the dealership that I bought it from, I asked them to do an oil change before I took delivery. It had about 98 miles or so on the car. They were the first original miles on the car used for taking pictures and initial test drives. Was, I think it might've been used as a semi demo car. I thought, you know what, let's start fresh. Let's have clean oil. Let's not have any of that like break in oil, even though the 19s have no break in period in the car. So I asked the dealership after we settled on that price, uh, if they could go ahead and change the oil. They did that. I got the car. The car was overfilled with, over with oil. So I needed to make a, a appointment with the dealership so they could remove some of that oil just a little bit easier to do it at the dealership. And honestly, I wanted to have a first experience with the dealership that I plan on using and have been using since then here in Kansas City. That all went well. 
took the car in. I wasn't sure what it was gonna cost. I figured it'd be relatively cheap. Ended up being free. They said, you know what, just, you're good. Go ahead. And I was able to leave, no cost to me whatsoever. Which is great because that would have been a cost totally caused by the dealership that I bought the car from. Let me be cl clear. I bought this car out of state from Florida. It was shipped to me. When I got it shipped here, it had too much oil in it. I tried not to drive it too much because of that. I've heard that can damage the car. So this dealership worked with me for service here and this is not the dealership I bought the car from. So it's really nice that they did it for free. So after that, the only other, like the only issue that I've really had with the car is I was developing some rattles that were coming from the door over here. Uh, in particular, when playing music at a decent volume, driving on the highway or something like that. It seemed like the bass was rattling the door. So figured, you know what, normal warranty claim, let's have them open up the door card, see what they can find. Ended up being that this, window switch area right here needed to be replaced. I guess it was just rattling a little bit and so they were able to come in, uh, pull the door card off, replace that. That was all done under warranty, no cost to me. Um, that rattle is mostly gone. It's not perfect, but it is still a Fiat Chrysler product at the end of the day, so I think I'm trying to be realistic. If I had a BMW who was doing the same thing, I probably wouldn't take it in for the level of rattle that I'm getting right now. It's very minimal under, I don't, honestly, I don't even know how to reproduce it. So it's it's not worth it because I'd spend more time at the dealership trying to tell them how to reproduce it and figuring out before I go to the dealership how to reproduce it, then it's worth to me. It's, I, I don't notice it. Yeah, so that was done under warranty at no cost. That's, honestly, that's been it as far as service. And when I take the car in next, which I'll probably do relatively soon. I probably want to do the oil in this car every 5,000 miles or so. When you buy a Alfa Romeo, your first service, at least for the Quadrifolios, is covered by Alfa Romeo. So I'll be able to get that oil change done. No cost to me. That's great. So yeah, I mean, it has not been an unreliable car for me so far and it hasn't cost me much. So if I'm really to think about my ownership costs and my running costs, uh, it's gas. So yeah, I've had no issues with the car. The first service is gonna be free. And let me remind you guys, I don't really baby my car. I drive it in race mode all of the time. I drive it hard. I drive it harder than I do on video because I honestly just don't like filming and holding a camera. I think it's a little bit unsafe. And so I don't drive as, as aggressively as I normally would. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's a performance car, it's meant to be driven. I drive it the way that it's meant to be driven and I enjoy it the way it's meant to be enjoyed. So this is not me babying a car and it being a one-off experience. My first Julia, which had 6,500 miles on it when I traded it in, I drove the same way. Yeah, that car was great and it never went in for service. Yeah. <laughs> so, so my experience has been that these are really good. Now, where most of my operating costs May, where all of my operating costs have been is gas. So what have I spent on gas? Well, let me turn the car back on real quick and get my current mileage. So 3,429 miles on the car. I have it in my notes that the first, it was delivered to me with 72 miles on it. Mileage that I put on it is 3,300 and 57 miles. Now, the way that I've been driving it, I'm getting 14 miles per gallon. So if I divide my mileage by 14 miles per gallon, then I've, okay, then I've put 239.785 gallons of gas on the car. Let's go ahead and just round that up to 240 gallons. At the cost of gas right now, 240 gallons times 2 point, I believe it is 9.9 right now, $717.60 in gas. <laughs> that's not cheap. Uh, that's not cheap at all. I actually don't like seeing that number. Yeah, it's a lot of money in gas, but I haven't had to pay any service costs in anything else. I won't have to pay for that first service, like I said. Yeah, I think that's worth it. I think this car's been super solid, so. Yeah, that's it. Um, that is my ownership cost, $120 a month for the, the six months that I've owned the car. And uh, I just, the smiles and the enjoyment that I've gotten out of the car are worth way, way, way more than that to me. So that's been my 19 Julia Quadrifolio ownership cost, my running, sh that, my running cost so far. Uh, yeah, 
Is that higher than you guys expected? Lower than you guys expected? I bet it's lower than you guys expected. Yeah, I bet it's lower than you guys expected, so. Is that making you rethink the reliability and the cost of ownership with the Julia Quadrifolio? I still think this is a great, great value car. And I think with the amount that you can get them as leftover inventory, like the amount off that you can get, pretty, pretty appealing buys in my opinion. But I, done this twice now so I guess I'm biased. And this is also a good time for me to remind you guys to subscribe if you've been watching my videos, if you want to see more content like this. I would super, super, super appreciate it. I don't like when people see me recording. I'm so insecure about it. I'm gonna finish this video out. We've got dinner to make, so I've gotta do some grocery shopping, which I'm not gonna record. That's not very interesting. It's no more interesting than what I just did, so I'm not gonna do the same type of a <laughs> couple of clips in the same vlog. But uh, we'll end this out. I'm gonna make dinner, make some fried rice. I've got like a Thai basil egg fried rice recipe that I've been wanting to try, so we're gonna give that a shot tonight. And uh, yeah, that's it. I'll see you guys in the next video. A little bit of a preview of that. We are gonna be doing the clay bar and sealant application on my car. Where and how and when I do that and how long it takes and how detailed I'm gonna be on that, that really depends on what you guys wanna see. So leave me a comment down below. Let me know how interested you are in the detailing content and uh, yeah, I think that's it. So let's see what dinner looks like. Oh man, the Tesla just got rear-ended.